welcome everybody to the 2023 Derby City Classic nine ball division. This is round four. And as you see on your screen, we've got two great players. The first one, Efren Batarez, needs no introduction. He's had a great week here at the Derby City Classic. And our second player is Justin Volk. You see on the screen, 96% and 4%. They're giving Justin Volk a 4% chance of winning this match out of the gate because he is a 656 Fargo. Efren Reyes is a 775. I think that percentage is a wee bit low, in my opinion. But we will carry on from there. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. And I'm very, very happy to be here with you all. As you see, Efren Reyes wins the lag. And this video is brought to you in part by Bad Boys Billiard Productions. Thank you so much for your support. Efren does win the lag. Like I said, it's going to be interesting how he's breaking the balls. Efren Reyes does have one loss. He was beat in an earlier round or defeated in an earlier round by the great Robbie Capito. Now the goal is to make the one in the side. He got the five down and has a nice shot on the one. Looks like he's going to draw back to the long side towards the eight. If he can, or maybe too much angle here. So he might have to punch over to the short side. Yeah, so he punched to the short side. Watch the cue ball. He should be perfect. Cue ball lengthened out there quite a bit. Yeah, he's put a real nice kill stroke on that ball to hold for the three in the top side pocket. Looks to me like he's going to come between the eight and nine. Three rails coming into the path of the four, which is close to the pocket. He's done nicely here. It looks to me like in rack number one, Efren Reyes is going to make short work of it. No need for explanation here. Center table anywhere will be good. Just like so. Probably wants to carry a slight angle on this eight to come two rails out for the nine. He's going to have to reach a little bit. Rail up now. Due to the angle he was served with. And in game number one, Efren Reyes makes quick work with a break and run. Nicely done. So he did pocket the five in the side pocket. The one went long. That tells me he hit him a little bit full. We are racking the nine on the spot. This stream is sponsored by Hustling USA, JB Custom Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Cues, Litman Lights. Thank you guys so much for your cooperation. See if Efren can make an adjustment on this break. Wants to catch the one just a fraction thinner than he did last time. Trying to pocket in this lower left side pocket. This is the only angle we have to work with, but I am thankful for it, and I hope you are too. Oh, he's caught these much more full, and this time he's come up dry. And you could tell by the path that that cue ball took straight back that he caught those balls full. These players are trying to cut break this rack. And if you catch it correctly, the cue ball will go back and forth through the pack, ideally catching the nine. And then getting a shot on the next object ball, which could be the two. Let's see how Justin Volk decides to play this.
Okay, he chose to bank at it. Did he luck the four in? He has lucked the four in. And he's carried a, a type of position. I don't know that he can go forward with this angle that I'm looking at. But he can definitely elevate. All he's got to do is dig. If he gets back even a foot and a half or so, I think he can hold the line for the three in the side. It looks to me like he's leveled out, so he must be able to go forward for the two in the lower side. Okay, he's overhit this and missed the missed the mark on the one. He's rattled the pocket. Efren is faced with a difficult shot. This isn't easy because he's going to go forward with the cue ball unless the angle's fooling me. Okay, the angle actually laid pretty good. So Efren Reyes is off to the races again in game number two. I don't see anything stopping him here. And he looks to be staying down on the ball quite well. He's had a very long week of pool. An amazing finish in the one pocket. He finished third. Everybody pulling for him to win the tournament. Congrats to Tony Chohan for winning the one pocket tournament. But boy, Efren Reyes... Looked like he was going to give it uh, everything he had and win the one pocket. And that would have been awesome to see at 69 years old. Wanted to stay below this six, but I think he's fine or content with this. He can punch two rails, three rails towards the seven. He could even come to the short side of the seven. I think he's going to elect to come center table like this. Boy, he's playing awful quick as well. Uh, Efren plays pretty quick, but he seems like he's in a real quick mode. Nice kill shot there. He uses that inside English with a center ball, if that makes any sense, about as good as anybody on the planet. Look at this speed. So Efren Ray is batting a 1,000, and so far that 96% chance to win this match looks pretty good and those percentages just adjusted to 98 percent this entire event is hosted by diamond billiard products ian simonis aramuth billiard balls outsville rack accustats video production and masters billiard chalk thank you guys so much for your support we couldn't do this without you. Efren making sure the balls tighten up. See if he if he's even aware. I I mean I don't know that he's even aware of of where he's got to hit to pocket the one. I think he knows. He knows everything about pool. Yeah, he's just hitting him way too full. Way too full. So I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't gone to school on that, right? If you're hitting him a little bit too full and the one is coming long of the side pocket, you've got to make your adjustment and catch it thinner. I think he's hitting the cue ball accurately. He's just not hitting the one accurately. Justin Boak. Guarantee you he can play. I've heard his name many times. It just seems to me that he might be a little bit uncomfortable and that might have something to do with the man at the table. Efren now playing trick shots. It didn't go. Obviously, he thought he had a clean pocket. Justin quick to get down on the ball. And quick to strike it as well. Could have a lot to do with the heart rate. Justin, fun fact here. Justin Volk has no losses in this tournament. As I mentioned, Efren has a loss to the great Robbie Capito.
Well, yeah. They definitely don't roll off when he's shooting, in all fairness. I think he was playing a safe there. He just overhit the two. I didn't mind the shot. He was stunning the cue ball down below the nine. He was playing the two, three rails up by the seven, and he just way overhit it. Don't mind the shot selection. Efren's caught the two pretty thick. Did he get away with it, so to speak? And it looks like he kind of has. Let's see if Justin can punish him for that error. You've got a couple options here. You could chip the two possibly up towards the three or behind the nine and play the cue ball behind the four. You could wrap the cue ball around two rails below the four and go up towards the five, try and get behind the five and eight. Or you could just bank at it. it looked like he hit it pretty good. It did not go. And he has left Efren in an awkward position. You get the feeling that off. Uh, Efren wants to stay aggressive in this match. He's not going to stay aggressive here unless he goes to the bank, and he did go to the bank. He's landed a little off angle here for the three to the lower right corner. I believe he can punch one rail over. Well, he's hit it a little thick again. Same pocket. Almost the same exact spot. All right. This is a legitimate shot that Justin Bolk has now at the table. And I like the fact he's taken a few more seconds. He looks a little bit more settled down as well over the ball. Okay, he's really overdrawn this. Actually hit the ball nicely, too nicely. Put a little left English on it, which pulled it back. Probably just needed some straight low. You can chop this with a center ball and come back and forth. Now notice the time he's taking versus the first couple innings. Yeah, he's overhit this as well. Obviously overcut it. The cue ball got away from him. Efren, a master at this kill shot. Oh, and the angle, he didn't really even have to kill it. He let it naturally run two rails up close to the five. And that's that center inside English. He just lets that cue ball just go through the object ball very cleanly. Efren Ray is playing at the likes of maybe one Joshua Filler or Jason Shaw. He uh, may be an Earl Strickland in his prime. He's running around the table, it seems, almost. What tends to happen here, guys, in the Derby City Classic is by the time that you get to the nine ball, most everybody's not only in stroke, they're almost comatose in a lot of ways. There's so much pool to play. It's such a great event. But everybody's very comfortable at this point in the tournament. And they're just kind of on freewheel mode. So you see a lot of really, really good nine ball played at the end of the derby. By the looks of the last two breaks, or at least the last break... I would say that Efren's not really too familiar with the one going to the side and his adjustments that he needs to make. I could be wrong. And he might be, get told the, the information during the match. He might inquire. But you would expect him to hit this a little bit thinner to where he gets the cut out of the 
out of the balls here. He's hitting the cue ball in the right place. Yeah, he's he's actually playing into them full, and he's getting this ball to go one rail across side, and he'll take it. Maybe Ephraim knows something we don't know, because that turned out pretty sweet. Look at this. Did he go to the short side, or was he going to play the combination? The 2-9 looked really good. But I don't know that he's going to shoot it from there. Yeah, he's going to play the 2 now. Pretty well controlled. This actually lays quite nice. Just come one, two rails up towards the center of the table. Efren Reyes, a 99% favorite to win this match. I'm starting to believe it. But I didn't in the beginning. Pretty self-explanatory here. You can stop or punch more towards the eight. And he's just punched a little bit. Nefren Reyes takes a four to nothing lead with the drop of this nine. And looking to advance in around five. Pretty interesting. He's catching the one full, and there are two games now where he's made the ball cross side one rail and gotten position on the one. And I haven't seen people break like this. Not near as much, anyway. The top guys are all cut breaking, guaranteeing the one. And, and they basically really do guarantee the one. They're making it realistically 85 to 90 percent of the time sometimes a hundred percent of the time and when you can guarantee a ball on the break it's very very powerful obviously so he switched sides now how well, he's hit them full again the five comes cross side but way short of the side and he's gonna come up dry can Justin Volk take advantage? That's the question. Can he turn this into a match? I've heard his name many times. I, I really feel like we're not seeing near the best of Justin Volk right now. And I'm hoping we get to see some of that throughout the rest of this match. Well, he's controlled this pretty perfectly he can play the three in the same corner as the one that he just played I definitely like how he settled down a nice stroke there much more under control he's let the cue kind of go out of his hands a few times I think that's due to that heart rate being up a little bit. I, I like that play. He had to cheat the three a little bit to hold the cue ball. Does he go into the five here? The only concern there is that the nine could be blocking the top left pocket. Yeah, so he does go into the five. Does have a shot, but it's nothing easy. Note the seven ball plays in the top right obviously it's got some pockets but the concern here is the cue ball is going to end up high of the six let's see if he can hold the cue ball here he might be steep enough to where he can kill this cue ball to the left of the lower side pocket so we're 
almost looking at a different player here than we did in the first couple innings of this match. I have to admit, I like that. I think he's made a great adjustment, slowing down. Oh, he's hit that really well. Very good hit. And now notice the angle he's got here. He's pretty flat. Actually, very flat. I think he could almost cheat it and go forward and come to the short side of the seven, but it takes a good stroke. He's looking to play the combination. Boy, I feel like there's a lot of room for error in that combination due to the spacing of the seven and eight. But he's at the table. So note the path of this cue ball. Um, he's going to get there, and he did get there, and I love the decision. I thought he might be able to do this. Does he have to run into the eight here? Or can he miss it? I think he's going to have to run into it. He might be able to miss the top edge of this ball. Yeah, he's run into it, but he's taken his eye off of the object ball. And all that work could be for not. He made a real nice run to that point. Efren here putting 100% focus and potting this seven in the lower left. Speaking of lower left, that's probably what he's going to use. Well, he chose to he chose to bank it. We are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets. They've tightened these tables up this year. And notice that seven didn't go. The side pockets are also tight. So we've got a break here for Justin Boak. He's got an opportunity to get one on the board. Can he get it done? Send the cue ball one rail up. Maybe a tip of high right. Just a fraction of right. He's looking to kick this ball, so it lays tougher than I, th I think you could cut that, but maybe I'm incorrect. But he knows what he's doing. What a hit. Nice shot, Justin. Two rails out. Justin Volk is going to get on the board in game number five. He will be trailing four games to one, but we're going to get an opportunity to see how he breaks the balls. They have Mr. Volk at a 1% chance of winning this match. If there was a casino anywhere nearby, I would be rushing to it. I'd put a uh, dollar on it, at least a dollar. Yes, I am getting crazy in my older age. And I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Thank you all for joining us. Justin trying to find the magic eight ball. And he has found it. So let's see what Justin knows about the nine on the spot break. Or as I like to call it, the Moscone Cup break. I think that's what we all relate this rack to. The only difference is here, guys, is that you cannot put the two on the back. Whereas in the WNT or the World Nine Ball Tour hosted by Matchroom, the two needs to be on the back. Well, he's also hitting them full, and the five is tracking. It's tracking, and that five went one rail across the top side, so 
pretty interesting. There's obviously something to this. I'm going to have to do my research and maybe try it. Efren Reyes is looking to cut this and come at least two rails out. Yes, he's going to come three. How did he do? Perfect. Pinch it back a fraction or stop right there. Well, he's missed the ball. Interesting. Couple uncharacteristic messes by uh, Reyes here in the mid match. Not even mid match. This is game number six. A little early to be mid match. The bank does play here. Where is the cue ball going? Well, it's going to lay up pretty sweet. Nice shot by Justin Volk. Very nice bank. Notice the four. It's not hanging all the way. Just play to overcut this three a fraction. Should knock the four down and get position on the three in the same corner, obviously. Yeah. This is okay. He'd like to get a little right of where the cue ball is now and off the rail. Just got to cut three in with a little left. Just a fraction of left. Or you can use a center high if it's laying right. Yeah, he's hit it too thick. This is going to be a problem. You cannot do that with the man at the table. Especially when you're in control. He might have a little work to do here. That nine is a big ball right now. If he'd like to come two rails towards the six, it's a real big ball. I think he might come between the seven and eight softly let's see how he plays this well, that's what he elected to do he caught the edge of the seven I thought he might hit it even easier and just take the cut on the six from above the nine he got the six down He's got him quite flat here, so he's got a couple options. He can draw back a little or a lot. He's elected to draw back a lot. I almost liked him playing it in the top right corner. Now he's got distance and kind of a blind ball here. Oof. Did he get away with it? It looks to me like he's got Justin snookered on the pro side, which can be a problem. I don't know if he can swerve the cue ball. He can obviously kick one rail to it. I think that's what he's going to be forced to do. As some people would say this is a little lucky by Efren Reyes, but the cue ball was good. like to catch this second rail well he's double kissed the eight in and in game number six Justin Volk has an opportunity to climb within two and he's done that is he still a one percent dog to win this match no wait a minute he's a two percent dog so Justin Volk climbing the ladder. Do us a favor. Railbirds TV on YouTube. Like and subscribe the page. They're bringing you the best content. Hit that notification bell. Thank you all so much. And once again... The magic missing ball. 
he will get it sooner or later. Pretty fascinating to watch Efren Reyes this week playing one pocket. It's no longer a game of defense. It's a game of the first shot. Efren's creativity has shined throughout the entire week, carrying him to the semifinals. And boy, what a Cinderella story. It is and really could have been if he wins the tournament. Let's watch the five. Let's see what the five does. See the five? It's tracking again towards the side, and he hit him so well he pocketed the one and the two, and he's got bunt position on the three. There might be something to that break. He hit those balls very square. But you'd have to ask yourself, if there was something to that break, wouldn't the elite players be using it? I don't know. I like the cut break. I think that the potential to pocket the one on the cut break is so great that it's almost impossible to shy away from it. Notice that he's forcing himself to use half the cue ball here. Otherwise, if he goes to a high cue ball, it's going to get away from him a little bit unless he decides to stun. Yeah, this was always the problem. This was always the problem. Can he see a piece of it? Definitely doesn't look like it. He didn't want to shoot to the side. It is a little nervy when an object ball has you hampered over the cue ball. It's going to go two rails at this four. Could go to the bottom rail as well to the four and guarantee contact. He said, no, I'm going to go this way and just about made it. Problem is the separation kicking from that distance just isn't going to be there. And Efren Reyes back at the table. Going to give us a left-handed exhibition. Looked a little snatchy, but got it done. Got a little body movement. And that's uh, probably pretty understandable after about 300 hours of pool. Nice strike there. Real smooth. Did he get on the 50? So I guess he's kind of in between. Meaning if he rolled this ball, the cue ball would be going towards the eight, I think. So he's going to have to... Oh, boy. This was uncharacteristic. And if there was a casino available, boy, oh, boy, would I be running to it. I might put another dollar on it if I was getting 98 to one, or excuse me, 98 to two. Justin Volk going at the seven. He's got to knock this down. Position is pretty much automatic. Just want to avoid the top left corner. He seems to execute quite a bit better when he takes this time. Usually works for most players. He's going to fall into position here if he can drop this. Oh, and he's hit it real well. He'd like to stay off this rail, and I think he's going to. Yeah, and he has. Another key shot coming up. This isn't a hanger. 
Just make sure you get the ball down. He wants to punch up above the nine. One rail. Like so. He's going to be just fine here. Justin Volk coming on strong in game number seven. A big miss by Efren Reyes. And there you have it, folks. Four games to three. Reyes leads. Justin Volk to break the balls. Let's see if he can repeat the process. Yeah, so what happened that rack? Efren gets on the 50-yard line on the 7. The problem was that he felt like if he wanted to roll forward, the cue ball was going to contend with the black 8. So I think he tried to punch to the short side and just hit the 7 so full that the cue ball landed on the long side of the 8. Maybe more focused on position than pocketing the ball. And when you have a split focus... Anything can happen. We've all done it. We're looking at the position ball and forget to pocket the object ball. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to keep my eye on the eight and see if it tracks one rail to the lower side pocket. And it does, but so this tells me, and he's pocketed the five. This tells me that maybe if he hit those a hair thinner, the eight or that ball behind the one tracks towards that side every time and might even get there. Pretty interesting. Now he can roll forward here, I believe, if the angle isn't fooling me. Just a fraction. Get a good shot on the two. Yeah, just like this and just like that, Justin Volk is within one game of tying this matchup. He was trailing four games to zero. So a little bit of a surprise at this moment, I think for all of us. You could say that Efren might be burnt out, which is understandable. But still, not expecting this. And Justin looking like he's settling in, right? Starting to see his skills come together in this match. I think you're okay anywhere above the seven, right? If you want to just come out center table somewhere here. You can play the six short side or long side. So you really just want to knock this three down and get some type of a cut on the four. You don't have to get close to it. Yeah, and he's overhit it. I think he was trying to get cute. Did he accidentally come with a shot? Don't believe so. I think he's going to be hampered by the eight. I believe you can see a piece of it. And the angle could fool me. If he tries to bank at this, I believe the kiss is available. He's going to have to really spin it to miss this kiss. Or is he looking to jump it? No, he's trying to... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I guess he was trying to utilize the 7, 8, and 9 there, maybe. And bank the 4, 1 rail below those balls and use the cue ball. Place behind the object balls as a blocker. Didn't work out. Efren did knock that down. It wiped its feet. But he got it down. This is basically a stop shot. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of flinching going on from Efren. It tells me fatigue is set in. 
if you've been to the Derby City Classic, you understand this tournament is all about attrition and longevity. It's definitely not designed for the 69-year-old legend. That's why it's so fascinating that he did as well as he's done in the one pocket. And to me, this looks like Justin is almost faced with a similar situation that he was before. But the six is a fraction higher this time. And if you can see the six, I think you can miss the kiss with extreme inside. So I'm a little surprised he's not kicking to the bottom rail here. I think you could use the nine, eight, and seven as coverage. But once again, what do I know? This is why Justin Voke is out there and I am behind the booth. What a shot that was. What an excellent kick that was. With position, he's got a little work left to do. I like that play. Less cue ball movement. If he's confident in his ball pocketing, took no risks there. He guaranteed a shot on the eight. Instead of going forward, I think that that was the right play. Automatic position here, whether he wants to roll it or draw it. Big shot coming up for Volk. Boy, he's hit this center pocket clean as a whistle. And Justin Voke is back. Look at this, folks. Efren Reyes was leading four games to nothing. It's now four to four. Okay? They're racing to five. Let's take a look at this kick. I mean, what a beautiful play. And he played it. Okay, so they're racing to five now, folks. And they've got Justin Voke as a 10% dog to win this match. Efren Reyes is a 90% favorite. I just don't know if that's accurate at this moment in the match. But you can be the judge. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Four to four in a race to nine. And they have Justin Volk, Volk at 10%. Who do you guys think should be at 10% in this match? Anybody? Or is it more like 60-40, 70-30? Let us know in the comments below. I would really like to know. Look at the seven. He's hit those thinner, like I discussed last game. And the seven tracked directly to the side and has gone in. This is really interesting to me. I picked it off early, off of a couple of breaks that Efren broke. And you've got to think that these guys are playing that ball. Look at the position on the one. So instead of pocketing the one... They're getting position on the one and playing the ball behind it, which is not typical with this rack format. He's got to be careful here. He's got to contend with the four if he goes forward. Well, I feel like he hit it with pretty good control. He did have a nice shot on the three. He didn't over hit the ball. I guess you could say he got a little fortunate, but the way he shot it, eh, I don't know that he got real fortunate. I think that's kind of a two-way play. Efren now can't be thrilled with the position he's in. 
And you've got to wonder if his eyes are bothering him. He's going to two-rail kick at this ball. He caught the third rail. And I've said it a million times. If Efren Reyes is kicking, you're not going to like it. World-class three-cushion player in his day. Probably can still play a little three-cushion, I would imagine. Justin Boat going to come off the back rail. He's made good contact. Watch the side. Is he going to get a little love? Well, he's gotten a little love in terms of tying the three up. So Efren Reyes has a few issues to face at the moment. He's looking at possibly rolling forward a fraction. Maybe coming off the top side of the three, playing the cue ball below the five. Looks to me like he wants to draw this, though. Oh, he's trying to go into these balls. Did he hit it perfect? Boy, he was close to catching that bottom rail first. And if he would have, he'd be dead straight in on the three. But instead, he finds himself in a trap. How does the magician hit this ball? Or does he even want to? Do you place the six in a different position? Or do you move the four? He's going at it, so he must feel that there's a way he can get safe. Doesn't want to catch that point. Oh, look at if he grazes the three. Potentially gets a rail there and puts Volk behind the eight. This is where, if you're Justin Volk, you've got to recognize where you're at in this match. Bear down and keep your man on the defense. He's going to utilize the nine, I believe, as his protect and protection. Obviously, utilizing the eight as well. Yes. I like it. I do like it. Efren's more than likely a pretty heavy favorite here to get a good hit. But you'd think that Justin will have something. Look at the speed. Uh-oh. This has come short. This has come short, folks, and Justin Volk in game number nine has a chance to take the lead. And if any of you out there are listening, do me a favor. I'll PayPal you. What is he doing here? I wanted to PayPal you and get you to the sports book. What is he doing here? You've got ball in hand, Justin. They're all open. You've got the four in front of the side. The five leads to the six. And the eight, nine are ducks. Take the ball in hand and run out. Take the five to four lead. You can't three foul the master. I believe this is an error. No matter what he does here, I believe it's an error. I would call Efren a pretty heavy favorite to get a hit here. And he has gotten a pretty hit, good hit. And he was a heavy favorite to make that hit. Justin, similar to ball in hand now. But any time you have five or six balls that are opened and they lead to one another, I know you probably want to three foul the magician. It's everybody's dream, including mine, and I've been playing Efren for 50 years. Take the ball in hand and run out. This is okay. I 
think he would have liked to have been past the nine, but he played it to go there. Pretty sure he can come one rail out, play the five in the short side or the top right corner. What? He's banked the ball. And so this angle must have completely fooled me. I don't believe I'm seeing things. I'm pretty sure the four played in the side. Now Justin elevated over the six. And this is definitely something you want to take a little time on. A great effort, actually. A very good effort. He went on a banking mission in the last couple of shots. Efren needs to bear down here with a center ball. I'm up and down. He's taken the defensive route as well. Therefore, the angle is definitely fooling me. And I do apologize for that. And this was a nice touch he put on that ball. So I think Justin's going to kick two rails to the top side of the five using the eight. Unless he's got a gap. And I'm sure he does have a gap to the, actually now that I'm looking at it, to the bottom side of the five. I think he still wants to go above the nine here. If you catch the top side of the five here, two right, well. He's left effort and a tester. This is definitely not a hanger in this situation. Okay, so that decision there, and obviously a great shot being where the five landed, but that decision there tells me that Efren's struggling to see the edge of the ball. And I know that feeling. I don't know that feeling at 69, but I know that feeling at 48. So he must be struggling to see the edge of the ball. And he felt that he wanted to earn a better shot than he had there. That shot was by no means easy. I feel the five is a little too close to the rail for Justin to kick and stick. So what do you do here? Can you see all of the five? Can you see enough of the five to play it up towards the nine and maybe float the cue ball back? Behind the eight. Looks like he's a little flat for that angle. So great shot by Reyes under the circumstances. Is he looking to cut it? Yeah, he did look to cut it. And to speak of casino, maybe Justin Volk needs to find one. Wow. But that gives you an idea of how tight these diamond tables are this year. Like I said, they've gone to four and a quarter inch pockets versus four and a half. We have new cloth. Yes, that makes the pockets bigger, but we're at the end of the road. We're at the furthest part of the tournament in the nine ball division. So these pockets have definitely tightened up due to the use of the cloth. Uh, pretty, pretty intelligent here. He was playing all cue ball there, putting his man on that rail. Makes life much more difficult. We talk about that in the one pocket world. The rail is your friend when you are playing a defensive shot. When your opponent can only see 30% of the cue ball. 
it makes life much more difficult. Justin is aware of that. And he's got the funny angle. Justin decides to play the five in the lower right. The cue ball is going to the top side of your table on the screen. What does he do? Yeah, and I think this is going to set up nicely for Reyes. If Reyes can knock this five down, he's won the little game of cat and mouse. Do you come back and forth, or do you just kill it with an outside and come one rail? He's going back and forth. He's caught it a bit thicker than he wanted. He's going to have a tester on the green six. Position is what they would say is pretty much automatic. So you're going to put all of your attention on knocking this ball down. And he's done that. Very well struck. Now he can go forward or two rails out. Player preference. Might even just draw this. Did take the two rail route. Justin Voke had an opportunity at that 10% to take a one game lead. Efren Reyes steals it from him. And in game number nine, Reyes leads five games to four. I am your host. Thank you all so much. Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. I appreciate you all for tuning in. I'll go over this one more time. Efren Reyes does have a loss. He lost in an earlier round to Robbie Capito. Justin Volk into this round four with no losses ironically let's look at that percentage again so Efren takes the 5-4 to four lead Justin Volk's percentage drops to 6% and Efren back up to 94 this is based off of Fargo rate Reyes to break the balls in game number 10 so let's keep an eye on the black 8 tracking one rail to the lower up to the side pocket boy he must have put a little something on that because that 8 took some English on that bottom rail he must have used some outside he got a bad kiss there and he is snookered on the 1 He does have an option. He kicks so well. He could probably control the kick off the back rail. Try and get some good separation. Possibly utilize the four, the three, the eight. Or he can push. Okay. There is definitely a couple of good defensive plays here. You could bring the cue ball back three rails behind the three and four and play the cut at the same time if you'd like. Justin decided to bank at it. Will it get there? I can't tell. It looks like the seven might have him covered. The hit is inevitable. There's, I don't believe Efren can miss the hit, but it looks like he... I, let's see what he does. Okay, he could see the ball. He had to use a maximum inside English. He might have overcooked it just a hair to where the cue ball didn't get back in time. And sometimes on this newer cloth, when you're putting a... a 
somewhat of a mass A or an inside English on it to swerve around another ball. It won't come back as quick as you think just because of the freshness of the cloth. But he did okay due to the green six. Yeah, he's come short of that kick. And that was the only way it could go wrong, in my opinion. You catch the backside or the bottom side, you're going to get some type of separation there and probably some cover. Efron back to the table and off to the races again. I see the only work here is probably from the three to the four to the five. Center table. I like the play. Perfect speed. Unless he's fallen dead straight, I think he's good. Yes, he is good. Game number 10. Ray is looking to take a lead of two games. Six to four. These balls all lead to each other. Wants to get flat here. He's got flat enough. Even probably better than that. He's going to go right towards the eight. He's going to get nice and tight. Good to go. He's got options here. I don't know if he's got the angle to just pinch back, or does he have to go to the rail? I think he can pinch back. He could also go forward. That's what he's done. He's pinched it. Pinched it nicely. The magic rack. Getting into the match. Reyes does take a 6-4 to four lead, game number 10. He will have the break. And you've got to wonder what's going through Justin Volk's mind at this point. He had ball in hand. And then chose to three foul him. And ended up losing that game. And he was going to take a 5-4 to four lead. So can you go back to that point in this match and say, that could have had a lot to do with what's happening now. I don't really know. I'm not in Justin's mind. Hopefully he's forgotten about it. But looking back, if he watches this, you've got to wonder if he realizes that that was possibly the incorrect decision. Raise to break these balls. Let's keep an eye on the green six and see if it tracks towards the top side. One rail. Well, it was tracking. Watch the nine for the golden break, and he's done it. He wants the thumbs up. The seal of approval is there. And Reyes takes a seven to four lead with a three game gap. And Justin Volk is back to one percent. And I must say, Efren hit those balls quite well. He got a lot of action out of all the object balls. Yeah, and I'd also like to know in the comments, just let me know. Should he gone? Should he have gone for the run out, or should he have played that safe to try and three foul Reyes? He's mishit these balls a little bit. He is going to come away with a shot on the one, but it is no give me. Efren is great at the kill shot. He could play the cut. I 
think there's a defensive play as well. He could bring the cue ball two rails to the thin side of the one. One, two behind the three, six, eight. Like this. And he's done a very good job. No jump cues allowed. You can jump with your playing cue or your break cue, I believe. But no jump cues allowed. So you have to use your playing cue, I was just informed. Justin needs to go to, I believe, somewhere around the chalk almost. Maybe a little further up or to the right. Now, what do you plan to do, though? Do you want to catch it full? See, he's taking this path again, and I noticed this earlier in the match. He did get success with it last time, but I don't think you can create distance this way versus going at the one-rail kick. He's done a great job and hit the pro side again. But this is the problem. I don't really see how you get away from leaving a good shot. Separation just isn't there. And you can believe it. Reyes wants to take advantage and he's missed the one. So maybe Justin Volk knew what he was doing all along. I am not going to question that. Do not want to overhit this. Somewhere out in the center of the table again, and I know I say that a lot, but playing this game, it seems to be where you want to be more often than not, and this will work. Does he have an angle here where he's going into the eight? It does not look like it to me, so I believe he can just draw back here. Just get close to the four. Nicely done. He's actually overdrawn this ball, but I think it lays nicely. He can play the five in the top right. If I'm seeing the angle correctly, basically draw between the seven and five. Yeah, and he's done well there. He didn't want to catch any of the five. He's going to be okay. Won't overhit this either. Well, he's let up, actually. He's decelerated or hit, miss hit the cue ball. This is close. So he's taking the extension off, I've just noticed. Is he jumping a piece of this ball? Might be jumping just a edge of the seven. Yeah, nicely done. He has not overdrawn it either. Easy to overdraw that ball. One more good shot here. In game number 12, Volk could come back within two. think you just roll this in with it you can use a little bit of a punch stroke but you just don't want to you want to utilize the entire pocket here so medium speed is about as hard as you want to hit it just a little below center cue ball here yeah, he's hit it real cleanly a little firmer than a lot of guys would have liked but he's accurate with the shot all is well 
looking at where he wants to be on the nine. He's got a reach here, but he does have the extension. Pretty quick there, a little snatchy. To get within two, this nine ball. Nicely done, Justin Voke within two games after game number 12. Back to break. He's had some success late, later in this match with the break. It has evaded him from time to time. And you've just got to wonder if they're playing this ball. This ball behind the one. If they're playing it one rail to the side pocket. Efren playing to get to nine before Justin. Needs two games. Justin needs four. They have Voke at 3%. I still think that's a little low, obviously. Let's not forget, Efren has also had a golden break. So let's keep our eye on the blue too. Will it track one rail to the lower side? Really bearing down here. Okay, so that tells me he's hit him a hair full if the two comes long of the side. Interesting break there. I definitely would like to experiment with that a little bit more. But I do say this, and I will say it again. I think these top players would know all about that. And they continue to play the one before anything else. Does the two pass the seven? This tells me it does not at the speed he hit it at. Notice where he pointed his cue. It might go as quick as he's getting down on this ball. Or is he going behind the seven? Well, he tried to get behind the seven. Got down on that pretty quick. Does Justin have an angle to miss the four, or is he going towards the four here? This is kind of the angle that will fool you a little bit, but this is better than no angle on the camera. He's taking a lot of time. It tells me that angle does send the cue well towards the four. So he's going to have to manufacture something here. Okay. Notice him. The draw stroke. Plan B is in effect. He did get safe or get away with it. These are the type of kicks that Efren controls. I would not be surprised if Volk comes up with nothing here. Efren playing some type of a safe behind the six and seven. And he has done that. But there is a pretty nice alley. Volk looking to play the six. Whereas in my opinion... I think you can use a high ball, which acts as low here. Catch the two pretty heavy and use the six and seven as block blockers. And he got real quick with the stroke. Took his eye off of the prize there and caught the six going in. That's going to give Reyes ball in hand.
So he's left himself the angle to go below or above the six here is what I'm looking at. I think he's put himself close to straight in. So he play the three in the lower left corner. Cue ball is so close to the two that this isn't an easy shot, even with ball in hand. Yeah. Sometimes when you're that close to the ball, going with distance, it makes it a little difficult. So Ray is rattling the deuce. Justin slowing down a little bit. Probably a little disappointed, but he's got to let that last error go. Take advantage of this and climb within one game. It's nicely done. You want to carry your angle to the five, whether you get below the four here or above it. Just don't want to land straight. Everything else leads to each other. You've just got to get to the five. Nice. Very nice. Love the angle. Keep the cue ball to a minimum here. One rail up to the five. With a pinch of right on it. Just to miss the nine. Watch it. It's going to be okay. Didn't want to land on the rail like this. Now he's got to be a little concerned about the cue ball going towards the six. I think he's good. You could put a touch of left on this. Just a touch to straighten the cue ball up. I think he's going to be fine here. Really need to put your focus in potting the five. I like the time he's taking. I like the fact that he got off the ball there as well. If you don't feel good on it, you reset. Okay, the cue ball was tracking towards the six, but he did his job and got it down. And now he's got options. He can hit this real thin with an inside or just play it with a running English, which is what most players are going to do and come to the two rail angle out towards the seven. Just like so. Should be okay. Don't really need to look at where you want to be on the eight. Put your focus in the seven. Take what the table gives you. It's anywhere out in the center of the table, he should be good. Yeah. Caught this bowl a, a fraction heavy or thick. It's going to cost him dearly. Well, I am Efren going to get away with this one. He thought that he hit it to the low side where it was basically going to rest near that magic rack. Cue ball did slow down in time. He's going to be fine. Let me reiterate or say this again, excuse me, not reiterate. That is not the magic rack. That is the Accurac. Efren Reyes leads eight games to five. Vote goes down to a 1% shot. And that's a little more realistic, right? Reyes needs one game. I get that. 
I don't know about at the start of the match, and I don't know about what those percentages were when it was four apiece. Folk was what, 6%? Or 10%? I think it was 10%. So, you be the judge. Game number 14 to come. Let's see how Reyes breaks these balls. I am slightly fascinated, if you can't tell, about the ball behind the one, going one rail up towards the side, which would be the four of this game. He's putting a... Notice the inside English he's put on that. That's actually twisting the four up above the side. He has come up dry. The two does play. Is the five an issue here for Voke going forward? He's gotten down awful quick. Oh, he stayed still, though. Went through the ball. When he goes through the ball correctly, his percentages go way up. Takes his time. He's got a nice stroke. It's only when he gets a little snatchy or quick with the cue that things go haywire. Is he looking to cross this? I thought it played in the side, and I know it plays in the side if you get a little lower. Yeah, he was very concerned about it, the way it looked. He's definitely got some work to do. This does play natural, though. Put your focus in on potting the three. You should get some type of position for the four in the top right. The only other challenge I see right now is from the five to the six. But if you get on the four properly, that shouldn't be an issue. Needs it to settle. Yeah. So he's elevated now over the nine. He's also contending with a pretty steep angle. I believe the five does pass the eight. But coming to the short side, dangerous. You want to stay well above it. Keep away from the corner pocket. Nice and smooth. He looks good. Well, he's he got quick in the backswing again. His practice strokes were great. Everything looked good. And then he got real quick in that final backswing. Causes big time inaccuracy. Practice strokes want to be like your final stroke. Did get away with it. The four did play off the eight. Pretty quick again there in the backswing. He does have a nice stroke. When he goes through the ball purely, it looks real nice. Do need to stay steady here. And he's just overcut it a fraction. He actually didn't hit that too bad. Just gives you an idea of how tight these pockets have gotten later in the tournament. It has everything to do with this cloth getting worn in. Efren Reyes looking to take this win. Advanced to round five. And it's been a pleasure. I hope you all have enjoyed it. And I am about right now going to make Efren a 99% favorite to win this match. What do you all think? 
I am your host, Scott Frost. Reyes is going to get it down. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the match. Until next time, take care.